We're going to talk now about the two years since this iconic photograph emerged of Patsy Stevenson, pinned down by police officers at the Sarah Everard vigil and arrested. The photo went viral, but it caused widespread anger over the policing at the event. Well, now Patsy and Dania Alabaid, who was also arrested that day, have won damages for how they were treated and also received an apology from the Met Police. Good morning to both of you this morning. Good it's good to see you both smiling. Um, Patsy, we first interviewed you, didn't we, not long after that picture happened. It's been a long, tough couple of years for both of you. How does it feel? <laughs> yeah, I think we've been non-stop crying, actually. I'm, like, trying to get words out now, but, yeah, it's... It's been such a, like, so many hurdles with legal cases. It's time and time again. You're not able to tell your story because we're under wraps. Everything has to be very hush-hush. And I think there was a lot of media that came out about what happened that we couldn't talk about. It was just... It was very traumatic as well. I think we both felt that. But and then, yeah, now it's... Patsy's yeah. voice has been so strong. I mean, she's helped me also bring my you know, grow my voice, because when it first happened, I was like, I don't want to go ahead with this. I've, it was terrifying. And then, you know, being convicted, it, my anger grew and grew, and I was like, you know what, let's, let's do this, even though there's big risk for us personally. So to get to this point means... Oh, I don't want to cry, but it means so much. It's still remarkable that this happened. You have a woman... I mean, I, I, it's emotional even talking about it, isn't it, actually? You have a woman who's walking alone through... I mean, it's very close to where I live, where Sarah Everard was snatched. Murdered, brutally murdered, by a metropolitan police officer. Women come out, go to the common where she'd just walked past and protest about the way that she was treated and women are treated, and you get treated like that at that event. I mean, it's absolutely shocking that it happened. What do the words from the Metropolitan Police, the apology from the Metropolitan Police and the, and the damages, compensation, what do they mean to you? I think it's, it's a relief that that battle is over. But that doesn't mean that we're, we're stopping the fight against um, police brutality and unlawful arrest and misogyny and racism within the police. I think... You know, we were never going to get full accountability, especially from the Met. Um, but I hope that this shows everyone that if you are being um, targeted or uh, some institution you think is too powerful, that you can't fight them, you can fight them and you can win. And it's really hard, but it does happen. Um, and I just, yeah, I hope that this gives all the women who attended the vigil, all the people who attended the vigil, some semblance of justice, yeah. even small, you know. Daniel, what happened... We've seen the photograph of Patsy, but, uh, Daniel, what happened to you that night at the vigil? Sorry. Sorry. No, I understand. I understand. When I saw the women on the bandstand, I had, like, this thought of maybe if I stand with them and put our arms around together, then they, will, they won't take us. You know, if we all stand together, then they won't take us. I don't know, that was super naive, and it was kind of like putting our arms around each other. We want to we wanna express our anger. We don't want to let this go. Um, so then, you know, when we were taken away, my, my first thing was just don't resist, because what if they... There's a lot of force and you hit your head on the floor, just don't resist, and then, you know, you, you, you get put in handcuffs and... Big, it felt like really big police officers on each arm and taken to a van and being surrounded. It just didn't... I didn't understand it. I was so... It's a strange thing when you're... The reason you were both there, the reason you were all there was to remember Sarah Everard and to commune together to protest against what had happened that day. Patsy, it must have been so surreal to think you were being forcibly mm -hmm. carried yeah. away, pinned by police officers to the floor and then arrested. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. So before, I couldn't talk about why I was there or what happened to me. And now I can say what happened. So I was putting a candle down. So I moved to the front of the bandstand to put the candle down. And we could see police on the bandstand and they weren't being cooperative. And so 
this woman held out her hand and said, can you come up and help? And so I did. And so that's why I got on, because women needed help in that situation. And I, I just, I don't like the narrative that everyone says we hijacked it, we did this, we did that. We were there on our own. Like, I didn't know Daniel before this, but we went, like, I went with a friend. I don't know if you went on your own or with a friend, but we weren't mm. with any organisers or protesters or anything like that. We went to put a candle down and then leave. That was it. But women needed our help mm. and I'll be damned if I don't go up and mm. help, so... Do you think you would feel this emotional about what happened if it hadn't been sparked by what happened to Sarah Everard? If it had been... What I mean is, if it had been a protest, a general protest about treatment of, you know, the, the way that police officers treat women, for instance. But I just wonder whether the, the fact that this happened in the wake of Sarah Everard, an, in, a woman, a vulnerable woman, being lied to by a police officer, being abused by a police officer, being kidnapped by a police officer and being murdered by a police officer. I wonder whether that adds to your trauma. I mean, if it was just a protest and if it was about... It felt like they arrested us because of code regulations. Yes. And our anger wouldn't be... I wouldn't be this emotional. Yes. But it felt bigger than that. It yes. felt like we weren't allowed to be angry or say anything against them. It felt it was like as us against them. We weren't allowed to have a voice and speak out against them. And that's why this is so emotional. Quentin, I, I wonder how you felt at the time, because I can remember being absolutely sort of aghast at the pictures I was watching from yeah. that as it unfolded. I and then meeting Patsy as well. I found it baffling. I found it monstrous. Uh, looking at those photographs... And by the way, two fine citizens. and Aren't they uh, just... Congratulations and thanks. Uh, to them, but looking at the photographs of that time and the footage of that time, all the police wearing masks, it was a terrible authoritarian time when uh, a completely normal behaviour was being prevented by the authorities. But what were the police thinking about mm. when, uh, for goodness, given the context of that case, which was so appalling, and here are, uh, are two women who, who are obviously not going to be uh, any threat to the public, and the police were behaving like that. It's disgraceful. Aisha, it, I... I think we all feel still emotional about it. You're obviously, Patsy and Dani are very, you know, a, a very affected long-term by what's I mean, happened. I actually feel quite emotional just, like, yes. having this conversation because, of course, it's bringing <clears throat> back so many memories for all of us. And every woman around the country, many men as well, but every woman around the country just remembers that period of time, the absolute shock, the unspeakable horror of what unfolded with Sarah Everard. And then on top of that, the horror that it was a member of the Metropolitan yeah. Police. And then on top of all that pain, the insult, the brutality, the way these women were treated at this vigil. And I think the combination of those things, and particularly what happened to that vigil, shattered the trust that so many women, particularly young women, have in the Metropolitan Police. And I just want to commend Patsy and Danny for their courage, mm -hmm. but also their, like, resistance. I don't think people realise how much, how exhausting it is on a physical level, mm -hmm. on a mental health level, to take an institution like the Metropolitan Police mm -hmm. on. And I know for a fact that both of them, we're all applauding them now, that they will have also suffered a lot of abuse, they will have suffered a lot of people criticising them. Mm -hmm. They will have become the, the focus of a lot of very negative, you know, comments and, and behaviour as well. Something really, truly shocking happened that day. Yeah. And sadly, it shone a light on systemic institutional misogyny in the police, which we are still seeing cases of week by week. I just have nothing but so much respect and admiration for both of you. Yeah. Patsy yeah. Dania, thank you very much indeed. It's such, such an important message that you're sharing with people and, and we add our voices. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. thank you very much indeed. Um, a spokesperson for the Metropolitan Police said the actions of officers were found to... were found to have been appropriate. They act... Inappropriate, I think that should say. Well, OK, let's, uh, let's get the word... Let's get the, uh, the wording right, because... I think we all know th there was nothing appropriate going on. They haven't given a full accountability apology, that, in my the opinion. The word isn't right. They've that worded right. it in a certain way, because they... Yeah. Oh, well, I, then this is absolutely... Sorry. The, the wording of the apology was <coughs> classic. 
uh, <clears throat> modern blame avoidance. Well, this is, we need to read this statement. Let's read this yeah. statement. The so statement so the let's Met. go back to it then. This is remarkable. So a spokesperson for the Met said the actions of officers were found to have been appropriate. They acted in good faith, interpreting complex and changing legislation in very challenging circumstances in a way that was entirely consistent with their colleagues working across London at the time. How do you feel about that statement? I feel like because this has been so long, and we, ha I mean, I was convicted. I mean, we, we, there was so much that happened in the last few years that to hear them say sorry, we're like, <clears throat> okay, we're happy with that. Yes. But there hasn't been full accountability, and there's no, two sides. There never to it. will be with the Met, especially. There never will be. But the the point of it is that you know they've they've. There has been a, an apology, yeah. so we're, we're taking it's that. It's a very small, carefully <laughs> yeah. worded Sounds one. Sounds to me like we need yeah. to get some Mark Rowley on the show. I'd be happy to talk Metro to him. And police. <laughs> Have you got more confidence in him being in place now <laughs> with regards to what yeah. he's trying to get put in place? In my opinion, that's just my opinion. I've met no, him. I mean, and, it's, no. better, <laughs> it's better than the last one. <laughs> uh, so it feels like there's some sort of progress. Yeah, because it was Chris Dick, ironically, a woman in charge at the time. I think he's better at lip service, if I'm honest. Thank you both. Yeah. Very much indeed. <laughs> I just I feel more flabbergasted no, by the statement. Is, well, it, 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 well, not really an apology, was no, it? No, that's not because an apology. Because that, that was put together by a committee of yeah. lawyers. You oh, can, that absolutely. absolutely. And that's the way the, these modern institutions are just constipated but, oh, by legalism. And just really quickly, Cressida Dick behaved so badly in the aftermath yeah. to all of that. Do you remember when Cressida Dick said, if, if a woman is feeling sort of unsafe... Go into flag someone's down house. A, ..flag down a bus. Knock on I someone's mean, door or flag down a bus. unbelievable <clears throat> to have a woman leading the Met and coming out with... Yeah. Nonsense like that. We're going to have to leave if it there, unfortunately. If you can't trust a police officer, Wayne Cousins, how are you? I mean, who it's is sickening. supposed to trust? Aisha, yes. Quentin, thank you. And Patsy and Dania, thank you for coming in and seeing us this morning. Yeah.